Eli Broad was born June 6, 1933 in the Bronx, but his family soon moved and he was raised in the wasteland of Detroit. Oh, that explains so much. His parents were not rich. His mom was a dressmaker. His dad worked at Five and Dimes. Mm -hmm. It's like pick and save. Oh, it's like an (laughs) A&P. As a kid, little Eli worked selling women's shoes and being a delivery boy. Al Bundy's little Al Bundy. (laughs) He was a delivery boy and stuff like that until he graduated from Michigan State University Mm -hmm. and fulfilled every little boy in Detroit's dream and became an accountant. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Give me that tie with my cubicle seat. He got married to his wife, Edith, and was an accountant for two years before he saw the that there was more money to be made in real estate. So he borrowed $25,000 from Edith's parents in 1957 and joined up with his wife's cousin's husband, which I don't even know, like, do you yeah. even meet that person in uh, your life? No, never. It's not even on the family tree. <laughs> that branch has been pruned. <laughs> this guy's name is Donald Kaufman. They joined up to start a real estate business, Kaufman and Broad Home Corps, or as it's now known, KB Home. They saw that the baby boomers were becoming of the age to start buying houses. So in Detroit, they started building houses with no basements and carports instead of garages, which I don't know what a carport is. Is that where you park your spaceship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it, it, you tie it to uh, so it doesn't float away, right? <laughs> It's where you park your Zeppelin, <laughs> which is what everyone in Detroit uses because it's post-apocalyptic. I thought that you couldn't land them so you crashed punk. them. Is that why the Hindenburg's such a big deal? Because I thought you were supposed to do that. <laughs> Where's the carport? <laughs> oh, the humanity. <laughs> so without these things, it made them much more affordable than a regular house. They sold 14 houses in their first weekend. Wow. They eventually started selling these homes in Arizona, California, and France for some reason. They have homes there. They have, I thought uh, it was just baguettes. You hollow one out. <laughs> When you're 18 and you like a hermit crab. The sign that you're a man. So KB, uh, uh, oh, oh. Um. And KB Home became the first home building company to be traded on the American and New York stock exchanges. Ooh, fancy boys. And by age 27, Eli Broad was a millionaire. In 1971, Broad decided to diversify and bought a life insurance company called Sun Life Insurance Company for $52 million. In the 80s, Kaufman retired. And in 89, Broad stepped down as CEO of KB Home and decided to focus entirely on Sun Life. Continuing with his catering to baby boomers, he saw that people were living longer, so he retooled the Sun Life as a retirement savings company and rebranded it Sun America, oh. making him the... Oh. O- you know them? Yeah. What, what, what do you... You do business I, with them? Yeah, I, maybe I've just seen a logo on old fruit crate labels or something. I don't... Maybe, maybe I don't I think know you're them. thinking of Sun Kissed. Sun America? Sun America. It's a... S-U-N or S-O-N? S-U-N. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's retirement savings. What would you know? Ooh. 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 <laughs> So doing this made him the only person to build two Fortune 500 companies. In 1999, he sold Sun America to AIG for $18 billion. (laughs) It's a laughable amount of money because it's so little. After he made this deal, he left the business world to focus on what he called, what he still calls venture philanthropy. Oh oh my God, that's a scary term. He's lived in LA since 1963. He's the third wealthiest man in the city. He's valued at about $7.5 billion. What does he look like? Do I know this guy? He looks a little bit like Yoda, really. Really? Like a human toned Yoda. Okay, he looks like a Frank Oz collection. Yeah. (laughs) Creation, sorry. I've said collection so much in the last (laughs) hour. He's puppet like. He's number six. 65 on the 2015 Forbes 400 My list. God. Even before he devoted his life to charity and then later pledged in 2010 to give away 75% of his fortune along <laughs> with people like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. He had always been giving a lot. He's gotten many honors for his work like in 1994 he was named by France a Chevalier in the National Order of the Legion of Honor. He got a Carnegie Medal of Philanthropy in 2007. In 2003 he gave $600 million to start the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard Harvard for medical research. Yeah. In 2008, he gave USC $80 million to start a stem cell research center. From 2004 to 2009, he was the regent of the Smithsonian as appointed by the US Congress and the president. Wow. He's given away over $2 billion so far. Half of that he's given to organizations in LA. His offices are in the Fox Plaza in Century City. KB Home even has a building across the street from the 
Hammer Museum, which is strange. Yeah. For now, let's talk about his work in the art world. Yes, please. Brode was never interested in art. Oh, okay. Well, that's awful. <laughs> but he has so much of it. But I his don't wife understand. was. His oh, wife was interested. He's and then, a good husband. And then gradually, she got him interested in it as well. Their first important art purchase was on October 25th, 1972, of an 1888 Van Gogh drawing for $95,000. The collection started out all over the place, but they eventually focused on post-World War II art like uh, Weissman. Yeah. In 1984, they started the Broad Art Foundation, which now has some 2,000 works by over 200 artists valued at around, this is the topper of them all, it's valued at around $2.5 billion that they've loaned out to over 500 museums around the world, and it's still growing by about one new piece every week. Really? They, get. they bought up tons of work. In 1995, he bought a Liechtenstein for $2.5 million, and he charged it with his American Express card and got 2.5 million frequent flyer miles. <sighs> One trip around the galaxy. <laughs> he even bought a bunch of art from Norton Simon. Really? He gave $20 million to UCLA's art program. Mm -hmm. He was the founding chairman of MOCA. Well, one of the founding yeah, chairman yeah. of MOCA until he stepped down in 1984. He helped get the Hammer Museum on its feet also in 1990 by selling its prized illustrated manuscript by Leonardo da Vinci to none other than Bill Gates for $30.8 really? million. Dollars. He's like trick-or-treating at different museums. Yeah, he's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Here I am, trick-or-treat. <laughs> Here's $50 million. Just kidding, it's mine. <laughs> Trick. Trick and treat. <laughs> there was the debacle of donations and yeah, funding yeah, yeah. at LACMA. He bailed out MOCA in 2008. Yeah. He's been called LA's modern day Medici. The Broad collection was housed at 3355 Barnard Way in Santa Monica, but Eli started getting notions shortly after what happened at LACMA that he wanted a museum all to his own to display his collection proudly. When this was announced in August 2010, locations all over the city were streaking their Pollocks to get to him to set up shop in their place. The lead contenders were Beverly Hills. They were going to put it on the southeast corner of Wilshire and Santa Monica. Santa Monica, not the street, oh. they wanted to put it next to the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium. Oh, yeah, and yeah, Culver yeah. City, they wanted it on the campus of West LA College, which uh, that would have been weird. Yeah, no one knows how to get there. The lo students. <laughs> they don't know how to get out of there. <laughs> the location Broad went with was 221 South Grand Avenue, across the street from both the Disney Hall and MOCA. Okay. He chose this spot because he just wanted to crush MOCA. Yeah. <laughs> he chose it because for years, he's been lobbying for that area to become the cultural hub of the city. You know how hard is a park around there? In 1996, he was even the one who helped start the fundraising to build the Disney Hall in the first place. Oh, really? Plus, like we said, he helped start MoCA. Some people see the opening of the Broad here as the final piece in the transformation of Bunker Hill into a cultural mecca mm -hmm. that started some 50 or 60 years ago when all the Victorian homes were removed. So this is the conclusion to that oh, episode. Great. Even more so, once the Metro stop on Hope Street opened in 2020 that's there goes your parking you don't need it take your hoverboard the land it's on was going to be some housing and shops and a hotel but that project got stopped by the recession the broad paid 7.7 .7 million dollars for a 99 year lease which is People like that. They got yeah. a 99 year lease on the land. They upset the Shen Yun performing arts oh. who had been trying to get that spot to build a theater and felt that the city went with Broad without giving them a fair shot yeah. for it. But money is money and Broad is white. So the Broad <laughs> Museum was a go. He doesn't do all that weird stuff. I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't dance around in robes <laughs> as far as I know. They, <laughs> they had a competition to pick who would design the building. Rem Koolhaas was Ooh. a finalist, but they went with Diller, Scofidio, and Renfro. The the same people who designed the High Line in New York, which oh. is pretty cool. The Diller in that name was also the architectural consultant in the movie Her, who envisioned oh. the future of downtown LA in that movie. Yeah. So you won, Spike Jones. Yeah, like always. Construction began in 2012 on the design they call the Veil in the Vault, with the porous outside of it being the Veil and the collection inside being the Vault. It costs $140 million and has... Is that a lot of money or something? It has three stories. It covers 120,000 square feet with 50,000 of that being public gallery space. Okay. The first and third floors are the public galleries, and the second is where the offices and the archives of the Broad Art Foundation now are. So that's where all the racks are. Oh, I see. Yeah, they're right. Why are they in the middle? Well, here's the thing. You go upstairs, and then when you're coming back down, you go down this giant staircase, and you can like look in oh. and see the archive, and like, oh, why aren't I seeing that? 
place. There's also a lecture hall on the second floor that is denoted on the outside of the building by a large indentation in the facade known as the Oculus. Yeah. Don't make eye contact with the <laughs> Oculus. They wanted the building to look textured and matte as opposed to the sleek shininess of the Disney Hall next yeah. door. The facade was a big point of contention during the construction. The museum was supposed to open in 2014, but the subcontractor, Seal Inc., who also oh. did the Apple Cube in Manhattan and the Bird's Nest Stadium for the Beijing Olympics. I'm not sure where those were. They switched the material of the outside from glass fiber, reinforced concrete to precast concrete, but then found that was too hard to do. So then they switched back to the original glass fiber. And in doing so, the opening was delayed for 15 months. Oh my. So in June 2014, Broad sued them for the $20 million in extra costs that the delay incurred. Yeah. Then the company countersued Broad for $10 million. They say they're still owed for the construction expenses. Yeah. So out of this happy arrangement, the Broad opened on September 20th, 2015 with Joanne Haler as the director and a $200 million endowment, which is almost as big as that of LACMA and MOCA's combined and the second biggest in the city's history after J. Paul Getty's $700 million to yeah. start the J. Paul Getty Trust. There was a keynote speech at the opening by Bill Clinton. Former President Bill Clinton? Uh, no, I meant George Clinton. <laughs> but how is the actual museum? Yes, please. The downstairs has the more recent work, and the top floor has 19 galleries arranged chronologically. There's Warhols, Coons, Jasper Johns, and a lot of Liechtensteins. Yeah. A lot of work from LA artists also. Yayoi Kusama's Infinity Mirrored Room is supposed to be a highlight in a museum. But overall, the consensus is that the collection on display is pretty underwhelming. Wow. Wow. Broad's collection has always been criticized for being significant, but kind of cliched. Though they do have a lot of works by individual artists, it's the same artists that everyone collects. Broad has been called by aficionados to be a cultural leader in LA, but a cultural follower in the art world. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They say the museum isn't daring enough in displaying a more personalized collection, which, you know, you should expect yeah. from a museum made up of someone's personal collection. Yeah. And instead, what's on display is a chronicle of what has been popular in the art market for the last 50 50 years. It's like a guy who says his favorite album is a greatest hits from a band. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bob Marley legend. <laughs> That's it. That's it for Bowie me. Bowie Changes is like my favorite <laughs> album. As a byproduct of this, female and non-white artists aren't very well represented uh -huh. because the art market largely ignores them and since it's basically an art market thing. Yeah. Also, a lot of the art is very new and the lasting significance of these works is yet to be proven. Plus, a lot of this was already on display at LACMA in 2001 and 2008. So it's basically just a storage facility that that displays some of its goods. Yeah. But the good thing is, is that there is so much in storage and they still loan out a lot of their work to other museums. So what's on display is likely to be a little bit different every time you go there. Oh, that's cool. They also intend to work hand in hand with MoCA in the future. So interesting things are maybe yeah. still to come or crushed. <laughs> Regardless, admission is free. So there aren't even any tickets available until February. And if you want to go on a weekend, uh, set your hopes to March. <laughs> There is a same day walk up line though. If anything opens up, probably won't. Is that why I haven't gone yet? Oh, someone explained why I couldn't go and I said, okay. <laughs> You're not welcome. <laughs> now, Broad has done a lot of good for sure, but before we go painting him as the best thing to happen to the city, let's look at the other side of Please, him. He's my favorite part. He has a bit of a negative <laughs> reputation amongst the people he's worked with. He's known to be controlling and to give in order to get in return a world run in the way that he thinks is best. He's been called Eli Strings Attached broad <laughs> but not many people really feel comfortable denying him much because he is probably the most powerful man in the city right yeah. now he's tried several times to buy the la times but they have had the courage to refuse him people still exist like that they're yeah. like i want to buy the paper i want it <laughs> yeah the, the press is mine <laughs> he hired frank gary to build his house in brentwood but broad ended up firing gary, and, fires gary and using the plans he had made to get someone else to build the house gary said of him eli is a control freak i didn't want to do it wow this uh wonderful Odd Couple was paired up yet again on the construction of the Disney Hall, where Broad once again fired Gary, oh. but Disney made him hire him back. <laughs> you make up with your brother. I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> well, Mickey says you should, and you don't want to mess with Mickey, because Mickey is tough. I might have four fingers, but I'm not going to use them. Aside from the Disney Hall, oh, we're being sued by Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from the Disney Hall, Broad is also known for getting the worst looking buildings out of the world's best architects, the ones at LACMA, case in point. Yeah. One thing he's doing that is actually harmful, other than just irritating Frank Gehry, <laughs> is what he's trying to do to LA's public schools. In 1999, he and his wife formed the Eli and Edith Broad Foundation to give money to schools, which right. is good. But his dream plan as part of uh -oh. the Great Public Schools Now initiative is to make 
fifty percent of LA's public schools charter over the next eight years, no. which mi- it might sound nice, you know, charter schools, I guess, kind of do better. But what this does is it basically makes these schools operate as for-profit businesses where they would not be publicly accountable, and instead of listening to what the parents and the public and the students want, they only have to report to what the major funders want. And since they are charter schools, and only fifty percent of the schools will be like this, they get to choose which students get to attend、oh. these. Schools. Only some kids will get to go to these schools, and the rest, most likely the poorer kids, will have to go to regular public school, which will be put in an even more dire state of operations because the charter schools are going to start leeching out students and resources, which would lead to even less funding for the public schools.、Yeah. Broad was even fined a million dollars in 2013 for illegally providing funding to defeat Prop 30, which would have raised taxes to help fund public schools, <laughs> including their art programs, which Broad professes to love so much he built a whole museum.、Yeah. Devoted、yeah. to it, he's also said he supports higher taxes. So going against higher taxes is kind of a weird move, isn't、yeah. it? The United Teachers Los Angeles Union is vocally against Broad. A thousand teachers, students, and parents protested at the opening of his new museum. While they aren't against promoting art and funding schools, they are against the idea of having better options for 50 percent of the kids in the city and、yeah. not 100 percent of the kids in the city. They see the answer here not as more charter schools who can reject any student that they want, but more funding for public schools who accept. Everybody, so keep that in mind while you're enjoying your precious Lichtenstein's at the Vale in the Vault. Well, fifty percent of you can. Whoever has the most in their pocket, <laughs> Broad, Broad, Bro, Broad, Broad, Bro.